Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Another Fat Guy Cooks. I'm your fat guy, Andy Baker, and today we're going to be making Killy or Kilmarnock pie. Let's go. Okay, so Kilmarnock pie is a little handheld pocket of goodness that you can get from Kilmarnock FC Football Club up in Scotland. And it's a steak pie that's based heavily on like a scotch pie. Uh, scotch pie, stay with me. Scotch pie is a pie, they, in Scotland they just call it pie. Because um, they're scotch. It's, it's pie that's made with a hot water or boiling water pastry, which we'll show you in a bit which is like a really sort of like nice, toothy, sort of not too crumbly, sort of like halfway between like a short crust and like a pork pie paste. I, I don't know. It, it's really good. I've tried it out. It's amazing. We're going to cook it. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's a steak pie that's a scotch pie that's... It's pie. We're going to make pie. Let's make pie. Right, so the first thing we need to do is is make our filling for our pie. Now to do that, we're gonna use the old, we're gonna use the old uh, Ninja Foodie air fryer, not a sponsor yet. Um, we're gonna stick it on the saute mode and we're just gonna throw all our shit in for our filling and, uh, and leave it to slow cook for a few hours. So let's get on with that. First thing, we just need a little bit of flour, which we have here, just some standard bread flour, a little bit of that. We're gonna throw some salt in there. I'm going to throw a little bit of ground black pepper in there. I'm going to give this a little whiskey round, mix that all together. And then we've got some nice diced steak. We're going to throw that in there. And then we're just going to move all of this around until it's all nice and coated in the flour. What this does is help protect the meat against burning a little bit. And it also adds a little bit of flavour. And it also helps thicken our filling as well, like our gravy. We're going to throw some olive oil into our sauté pan. Which is a bit cold. We're going to grab a couple of onions. Okay, and then we just need to cut our onion up into little ribbons, little strips. It doesn't really matter because it's going to be sauteed for so long that it's basically going to reduce down to just mush. I'm going to throw our onions in here. And we're just going to sweat out our onions until they are starting to go like a bit translucent and starting to look a bit soggier. Okay, onions starting to look a bit translucent -y. We're gonna move those off to the side and we're gonna throw in our steak. And we're just doing this to add a little bit of brown to our meat. This bit is all very, you do what you want. You know, it, it's very loose because it's, ba we're basically just making a stew that's gonna uh, be the filling for our pie and you can make it however you want. Okay, so everything's nice and browned. We've got a nice fond on the bottom of the pot. So we're gonna deglaze that now, but first, we're just gonna throw in some tomato paste. Nice, big ass squirt of tomato paste. There we go. And a load of English mustard. You can also use Dijon, but it's better with English filling. Good whack of that. And good old dribble of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. 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 And then we're gonna deglaze with some beef stock. This is about two cups, I think. I'm also gonna throw in a couple of these little concentrated stock pots because it just adds more beefy flavor, which is what we want. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of water, just so we've got enough to cover everything that's in here. We're gonna reduce this down, obviously, but I just wanna make sure everything's covered. 
And then we're just gonna give this a good stir around, incorporate everything. Try and scrape all that lovely fond off the bottom of the pot if you can. There we go. And we have a nice big old bowl of stew or whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna let that cook on medium for about two and a half hours until the beef is all stringy and will just come apart and everything's reduced down to like a nice thick sort of fillingy stewy kind of thing. I know what I mean. I should probably shout out whose idea this was because I, I don't have ideas of my own anymore. Um, the last episode was Paul. Uh, thank you for the idea. This one's Ollie. Thank you for the idea. I don't have ideas. I can't, I, I don't know. If you've got ideas for what I should do on the show, please send them to me because I, I don't have any. I don't have any ideas. So I, I'll take all of your ideas. Um, so yeah, stick them in the comments, Twitter, whatever. Okay, so this is going to reduce down and, and simmer away for the next two hours. We'll be back then to put the pies together. Pies. <laughs> Okay, so while our filling for our pie finishes off, let's get on with making the dough. So the dough we're going to be making is a hot water crust dough, which is a bit different to normal doughs. It's a little bit sort of, I don't want to say tougher, but it has a little bit more bite to it and has a nice crunchy, crispy sort of, and it doesn't fall apart in your hands. So you can like grab one of these pies and just like, um, and just eat it and it all stays together. Really good for a football match oddly, which is, you know, where they were made famous. So, the dough. We need 280 milliliters of boiling water. To that, we need to add 110 milligrams of lard. Pretty much bang on. I'm gonna cut this up into smaller bits just so it melts quicker in the boiling water. So we've got to melt all of this lard in here. While that's happening, we need 500 milligrams of flour. 500 milligrams, 500 grams. Grams? Grams? Milligrams? Grams. 500 grams of flour. There we go. We also want to add a load of salt to this, nice big fat pinch of salt. I think what we might need to do very quickly. Uh. So you want the water to be boiling almost as you put it into the dough, uh, into the flour to make the dough. And this will have cooled down a bit too much by the time all this lard has uh, melted. So we're just gonna bang this in here. And we're just gonna bring that up to a quick boil because we want it to be boiling when it goes into the flour. Because what happens is the steam and the hot water helps partially cook the flour as you're adding it in and making the dough. And then that means you get a slightly tougher crust on your dough, which is what we're looking for, for the pie. Did any of that make sense? In, down in the comments, if any of that made sense. I hope so. I know what I'm doing. Back up to a boil. This should, so the combined weights of the, of the, of the water, and the lard should be 390. So I'm just gonna double check that that's still right. It's that lovely layer of lard on the top of the water. Beautiful. So we're gonna put our stand mixer with our dough hook attachment on, put it on low. You can do this by hand too. You just have to sort of make a well in the middle of your flour and then slowly add it. It did the boring way, I can't be bothered. So we're just going to slowly add in, or not that slowly, because I'm lazy, add in our boiling water with lard. And we're gonna let this go until it's all combined. So we now have a semi-cohesive dough, looking good. Just gonna make sure this is, there's no dry spots. All the flowers incorporated. We need to throw this in some cling film, or in this case, I'm going to use a Ziploc bag because I've run out of cling film. Get as much air out as I can. Put 
flatten him out a bit. Okay, and we're going to leave that to sit for about 20 minutes until it's cooled down a little bit and then it's ready to go and by that time our filling should be ready and we can get on with making our pies. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. Let's have a look at our stew or our filling or whatever you want to call it. that out all right so our stew is looking good keep calling it stew the filling whatever you want to call it is looking good all right let's clear some space on here right we need a little bit of flour right first thing actually what we need to do is put two of these little pie tins and i've got more but they're fucking expensive so we're just going to butter the inside of these all the way around just to give us a bit of a chance of getting a pie out in one go so little circles to go in the bottom just to help us get the pie out don't know if we'll need it but i've done this too many times and got stuff stuck and then i'm just gonna give the actual top of the case and a bit of a buttering as well so they're ready to go we need a little bit of flour Get rid of that. Open our dough up. And we'll probably only need about half of this to do what we need to do. So, we're gonna roll this out to about three or four mil thick, roughly. We don't measure on this show. We want a nice good thick crust if we can and then I want enough so obviously I can take it lay it over this and then get it all around the outside so we need a decent amount maybe go a little bit bigger okay so let's do the first one probably I don't know like so and then I'm gonna take a dough Lay them on top, very gently coax him in while releasing the sides to let it sort of fall in. And then once we've got good coverage all the way up the sides, like so, we just need to trim off the excess. That seems to do the job. So, and then we're just going to tidy it up with our finger. So it's all the way up to the top. There we go, like so. I'm just gonna do that for the other one. There we go. Lovely. Right. Now we need to make the lids, which we'll just use a bit of fresh dough for that. And then we're just gonna trace around the bottom of our tin. Like so. Pop that to one side and do another one. There we go. Two lids. Right. Now we need to fill our pies. So we're going to ladle out some of our pie filling. And we want to fill it about four fifths of the way up. Like so. Okay, and then lids on top. Push down a little. They want to just go down a little bit lower than the outside of the uh, the outside, and then you should just be able to very gently sort of mush them together. Two pies, a couple of little holes in the top. Let the steam out. These are going to go into a 180, 200 degree oven for about 30 to 45 minutes. 
Once they're nice and golden brown on top, you will know that they are done. And I will be right back, hopefully, with two beautiful, gorgeous, what are these called again? Killy pies. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. It's the next day. We've baked our pies. We've let them cool down and they are looking pretty good. Let's see if they come out of the tins and if they're edible. You know, ideally. Um, I guess we just... Oh. Pie! One worked. See if this one works. Oh, look at it go. Hi! Beautiful. Check them out. We have two beautiful killy pies. Hopefully. I mean, they look pretty good. So, I mean, you can eat these hot, you can eat them cold, whatever. Uh, we're just going to munch on them cold for today because I can't really be bothered to heat them back up. But yeah, man, they look pretty good. And um, one thing that I did do, uh, I didn't do. The one thing that I didn't, you didn't see me do, is um, season the uh, the, stir, the the filling. Um, I did that while it was when it finished cooking. I just you know a bit of salt, a bit of pepper, whatever. So it, you know it did, I did season it. I just did it off camera because I'm an idiot and I forgot. Um, but yeah, let's try it. Ah, I can get my mouth around this. Look at these though, pretty cool, right? This is perfect. I can see why they made them for football matches because perfect little hand pie that you can just. Ah. Uh, mmm. Oh man, they are so good. The filling's beautiful. The pastry is gorgeous. Yeah, man. I eat one of these at a football match. I'm going to eat one now. But yeah. Um, uh, uh. Mm. I'm sure it's a beautiful filling. If you are Scottish and have any notes for me on this, please chime in. Because I tried to contact the uh, the company that makes them, uh, Browning's the Bakers, but they close at like 2:30. So every time I tried to contact them, it was too late in the day, and I couldn't get hold of them. Um, but I was, and they they call it their secret recipe. So I'm not sure that it shared much with me, but would love to know how close I got with this. So um, so yeah, another fat guy's just cooked. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, especially the subscribe part. Give me that subscription. And I'll, uh, I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Another fat guy.